Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So today we're going to start our discussion of protein function. So we've already taken a look at um, amino acids and primary structure. Uh, we've taken a look at uh, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and quaternary structure. Now we're going to talk about protein function. So uh, in particular, we're going to be talking about ligand binding, and we're going to be spending a fair amount of time talking about this protein called myoglobin. Okay, let's see what we can do. So um, proteins, they interact with other molecules. That's our beginning. So you know what, let me, I think I want to go to a different color to start off with. So proteins interact with other molecules. Let's define something called a ligand or a ligand. Depends. A lot of people pronounce it ligand. I prefer to pronounce it ligand. Um, any molecule, <clears throat> excuse me, that binds, here's the key word, reversibly, that binds reversibly to a protein Now, this can be any molecule. Even another protein. Even another protein. That's it. So a ligand is any molecule that binds reversibly to a protein. Now, the binding site is exactly what you think it is. The binding site, it's the place on the protein. The place on the protein. Where the ligand binds. Okay, now, a protein may bind several ligands at several sites. So again, we're not putting any restrictions on this. We can have one binding site, two binding sites, 37 binding sites, whatever is necessary for that protein to function and do what it does. Protein may bind several ligands at several binding sites. Okay, and binding is specific for that ligand. It isn't just any molecule that comes around and you know the protein will bind to it. It's very, very specific. So binding is specific for that ligand. Okay, now proteins are not static. Proteins are not static, are not static or fixed. They are very, very, very flexible. They are very flexible. I'm not going to repeat that they say that they definitely move. They definitely move. I mean, we know that. They're very, very flexible and very, very accommodating to different things. Okay, now, when a protein changes conformation, changes conformation to accommodate the binding of a ligand. This is called induced fit. <clears throat> this is called induced fit. 
you've often heard these, this term induced fit used to describe an enzyme uh, from your other bio courses when you talked about enzymes. Um, an enzyme, it's induced fit in order for it to bind its particular substrate. Well, it's the same thing. I mean, an enzyme is just a protein molecule. The only difference between an enzyme and the substrate, we don't call a substrate a ligand because the enzyme actually does something to the substrate and changes it, changes molecular form and spits out another, you know, a, a different molecule altogether. Whereas for a protein that binds a ligand, it doesn't do anything to the ligand. That's the difference, but essentially it's the same thing. You know, a protein is a protein that behaves a certain way. Okay, so let's see. Now, in multi-subunit proteins, <clears throat> excuse me, changes in the conformation of one subunit, in the conformation of one subunit, will cause changes in the conformations of one or more of the other subunits. Okay. Now, um, as we said before, enzymes are a special class of ligand binding protein. So again, not all proteins bind ligands. The proteins that do, they're called ligand binding proteins. Um, so enzymes are a special class of them insofar as the ligand that they bind, uh, they actually do something to it and then release it. Whereas for a normal ligand binding protein, it interacts with that, that ligand and then the ligand just leaves. So there's nothing, there's no molecular change that is, you know, affected on that particular ligand. <clears throat> 